Hi, Dan, Midwest Technical Sales. We're going to cover some, maybe for some people, some very elementary things about how to do certain tasks with your hardware. Uh, for others, um, you know, they get stuck into a different role. A lot of times they may be the Linux programmer that gets stuck with doing, uh, you know, tape drives and they just get all confused. So, if it's too elementary for you, you can just skip over it. But if you find some usage out of it, just sort of follow along and see if there's something of interest uh, to you. So the first thing we're going to cover is how to remove a tape drive from a Dell ML6000. Now, this will fall into the same category as an ADIC i500, uh, the uh, IBM version of this. So there's a lot of similarities to it. So Rich is behind the camera. and. Uh, we're, we're in a technical facility, that's where you get Midwest technical sales, so we're not in a studio, okay, so you'll see technical stuff laying all over the place. Okay, the very first thing we have is the back of an ML6000. Now you may have an expansion on here, another 9U expansion for 14U high, but this is kind of the base configuration of the library itself. We have uh, one drive in here, you may have two drives, but for the sake of this, we're going we're gonna to do with just one drive. Now, the first thing uh, in a case like this, what you have to do is to remove the SAS cable. If you have fiber, which looks like this, you have to remove the fiber cable. Pretty simple on the fiber. There's a button on the top. Push this. Fiber cable comes out. You can't put it in upside down. It only goes in one way. Clicks in place. On the SAS, it's, it's similar. This little tab here locks the SAS connector in place. So you have to kind of pull the tab back. Once you pull the tab back, this is the SAS connector that comes out of the drive. Looks like so. You can put it any place. Yeah, stick it right here, just so it's out of the way. One of the things that you know I may have failed to mention is that you want to power this unit off, okay? And I would suggest powering the unit off by the uh, button on the front. Um, and then once it's powered down, if you want to pull these two cables out for the AC power, you can do it. But it, it, it shouldn't be a, a big problem. But don't pull these out first. Turn it off with the power button. Everything gets back to the home position where it's happy. Then uh, here we have two screws that you have to remove. Okay. Now these are thumb screws. And, you know, back from your elementary days, uh, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So you want to turn these guys counterclockwise. Uh, to have these screws and they're, they're sort of have a spring in there. Now you have some people who put these in so tight nobody can get them out. So if you have yourself just a Phillips head screwdriver you can get it in here okay and then you can loosen it if you can't get it. They don't have to be in there that tight but some people get carried away. So there's a little handle on the drive here and once it's out you just I put my thumb on top of here and the first quarter inch is a little hard so you just Pull it out. Okay, now the drive is loose. Take two hands, and the drive is out. You could place the drive here to, re you know, and if you want to reinsert another drive, grab and put it here. The principle here is what you're doing is on this particular drive, you are seeding a connector into this connector here. Okay, so, and these are the rails that it rides on, so you can't get it in in any can't get it in the wrong way. So again, we're going to insert the drive. It sits here. You get it lined up in the center, and it'll slide in there very easily. It's on the rails. You get to that last quarter inch, and this is where you give it a little push, and it's locked in place. Tighten these up. Put the SAS connector back in, same way it came out. and you're good to go. So if you have fiber, fiber, SAS, SAS. Now, 75% of the time, if you take a drive out and put the same drive back in, the library will see it, do an audit on it, and be happy. In some cases, it might not be either. Your backup uh, software program might not be happy with the change of serial number for the drive. So what we encourage you to do is to power the library on. It's going to take maybe 10 minutes for it to go through, do an audit, 
say, oh, I've got some new hardware, okay, it's going to identify that that same drive isn't in there. It will also level the firmware for you, so it's going to just take a little while to get it going. At this point, you're further ahead rebooting your server, okay? So the server, power it down, start it back up. It's going to go interrogate the bus, and it's going to find something new, and it will install the drivers for you. With the newer OS, sometimes this isn't tran it's transparent to you. You don't even know what's going on. So let it, let it go out and do its thing. Um, so that kind of covers drive replacement. Now, in some cases, you may have an issue with having to repartition the drive, do some other things. And it gets kind of a uh, little bit more technical for the purpose of this particular video. So if you have issues once you do that, providing you buy that hardware from us, we do provide this technical kind of support on the telephone at a very reasonable rate. And we can do a few things. Uh, with your IP address, we can remotely monitor what you're doing. With some of the other more sophisticated uh, programs out, you can be at your desk, let's see, and, and we can be in our uh, facility here in Minnesota, and your server could be out in some other state. So we can remotely monitor what you're doing, tell you what buttons to push, and actually do the stuff for you. So, so we can kind of do all that, but that's an additional charge. While we're here, um, the other thing about it, we do have a lot of our customers that self-maintain these units. And the problems you're going to have is a drive doesn't work anymore. We offer repair services. Or you may have an issue with a picker. This is the picker assembly that fits in there. It rotates, it goes up and down. And it's very easily replaceable too. We've had several of our uh, customers replace that. There's just a small cable in here that's sort of on a retractable cord. This guy plugs into here, and you've got some gears that you have to mesh up in here. And, you know, it, it isn't that difficult to do, but you have to have a little bit more mechanical skill to replace a picker as opposed to uh, just replacing a drive. So I'd like to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to get a hold of us. We can help you out. Thank you.